three mistakes you might be making that are keeping your feet cold. Straight to the point, guys, honestly, there's not gonna be any sponsors here or telling you to buy this thing or that thing. This is just for your knowledge, just the bare essentials. So thinking you need to buy the most expensive high-tech winter boots out there, that's the first mistake we'll talk about. So you know those completely waterproof high-tech winter boots that have the insides with multiple layers of moisture wicking material? Well, they do work really, really well, especially if you're just standing still in the cold. But if you're doing any kind of intense activity where you're going to be camping the night out or could potentially get caught in a situation where you can't dry them, those kind of boots become moisture traps and your feet are going to freeze. Now let me explain why and how the boots you have right now might be way better than these. Okay, so how it works is the outside layer like this is so waterproof that the inside moisture can't escape or evaporate out. Now the inside material is designed to pull that moisture away from your foot. It does its job really well. Now that's all that needs to be done if you're going home at the end of the night and are able to dry your boots out over a fireplace or back at the cottage. But if you get trapped out there or you're camping out the night, what happens is that moisture is still stuck in the membrane layer. And that is essentially turning these types of boots into moisture traps. Now that freezing cold outside is gonna be slowly sapping that heat out of your foot by way of conduction. Now growing up with survivalist idols like Morris Kohansky and Les Stroud, the survivor man, you might be familiar with the sayings, you sweat, you die, or stay dry, stay alive. And that's because water conducts heat more than 25 times faster than air. So don't get me wrong, these high-tech, expensive winter boots are extremely good if you could go home and dry them out, or you're just out for a day trip. They're probably the best. But if you're camping out for more than one night or can get possibly stranded out there, then those types of boots are just gonna slowly suck heat from your foot. And even worse, if you're camping and wake up in the morning, they'll be completely frozen solid. And your boots that you have now, or some traditional cheaper boots can actually be way, way better with the right system. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Deej, I see people with completely waterproof rubber boots similar to this. You might even have them and they work amazingly well. People swear by them. Well, there's a reason they work so well and that's because there's a system to use in these, which leads exactly to our second mistake, not having a moisture management plan. So what exactly is a moisture management plan? Well, remember, keeping dry is keeping warm. And no matter what activity you're doing or what boots you have, your feet are gonna sweat if you're exerting yourself. So the key to all this is to have a plan when you're in inactive states. So we'll make this visual. Let's take a look at a plan for three different popular types of boots out there. So you may have an insulated or non-insulated hiking boot similar to this. Now, because this is a hiking boot, it's not a dedicated winter boot. But that being said, it still can work really well in the winter and keep your feet warm. And it all boils down to having a system. So the outside is leather, which is great because it allows moisture to evaporate out, has some degree of breathability and some degree of waterproofness. But they don't have any removable liner. This one actually has an insulated liner. And while that is beneficial to some degree, moisture can still get trapped in there if you're using these as winter boots and can make your feet even colder. But with the right plan, we could solve this completely. Now the strategy revolves around your replacement pair of wool socks. Now, wool socks are just simply the best socks you could wear. Not only do they have amazing insulation, they also retain that even when they get wet. They're able to wick moisture away from your skin. And one of the best parts that lead into your system is because they're so breathable, they're gonna dry in your sleeping bag, whether that's on your foot or just putting them in your sleeping bag with you while you sleep. Now, when it's less cold, I'll have a wool or synthetic inner liner sock. And then on the outside, a big bigger wool sock. Now one golden rule that a lot of bushcrafters and survivalists will stand by is that cotton kills. Basically you want to just avoid cotton or cotton blends at all costs because it doesn't wick away moisture from your foot and it doesn't retain its insulation value when it's wet. It's just going to perpetuate sapping your foot of heat. So changing this one thing whether it's in your socks or just any part of your outdoor gear from cotton or cotton blends to like a wool or some synthetic that wicks away moisture that's going to be a huge game changer. So right after you stop majority of your activity, maybe you're settling down at your campsite, you change out your thicker wool sock for your second backup pair of wool socks. This one being a little bit more wet, we could dry it by the fire if we really want to, but it'll dry just as well in our sleeping bag overnight. And you'll have two pairs of warm wool socks to repeat the process again. Now our second type of boot is a traditional pack boot just like this. Now traditionally it has a rubber bottom to make that waterproof and then the upper layers are either going to be a 
leather hide or some type of nylon or canvas. Now the thing that makes these boots so amazing is they have a removable wool liner. In general, I think these boots are the most practical and my absolute favorite type because they could be used in pretty much all winter conditions. They have the waterproofness, they have the ability to remove the liner, they have some moisture wicking and breathability material here. They're a really practical boot and not just that, they're also very popular and inexpensive. You could actually find these for dirt cheap at a second hand store if you want and there's tons of different brands that make this style of boot. So let's talk about the strategy for this type of boot. Because they have this removable liner, you could easily just take this out. This is what it looks like. It's made of a wool felt. The inside of the boot is really simple. It's just this hide material pretty much. So there's nothing to absorb water in there. The strategy with the pack boot is gonna be very similar to the one we use for the hiking boot with the exception of we're gonna bring backup liners themselves instead of just backup socks. You could get removable liners for these boots very cheaply, or you could even buy a cheap pair of pack boots themselves just for the spare liners. But generally what we wanna do is have our inner sock and then our outer sock and it's going to do the exact same things they're slowly going to wick away moisture and once that moisture gets to the liner level and starts saturating this we change them out for our backup liners put those in and now you can put all your liners into your sleeping bag with you in the morning when you wake up you're going to slide a nice warm liner into your boot and you never have to put your foot into a cold boot again now as promised i'll cover another type of boot which is the rubber boot and a lot of people swear by this option now this works really well with two different types of systems and I'll explain them to you. Now this boot here doesn't have the removable liner meaning I'm gonna have to use the sock changing method and because no moisture is gonna evaporate out I might want to bring two or even three replacement socks because you're gonna be changing socks at a faster rate than some of the more breathable boot options. Now some boots like this will have a removable liner which is amazing because then you could change the socks or change the liner whichever one you choose and as long as you have the moisture management plan of changing the socks pretty frequently or changing that removable liner then you're golden now there's actually a second method that works really well with these types of boots too that's the vapor barrier method how it works is similar to how a wetsuit works you're gonna sweat and use something like a plastic moisture barrier to keep all that moisture in and saturate that warm sweat water around your foot Sounds really gross. Over top of this, we'll have our insulating thicker sock that is always gonna stay dry and no moisture is gonna transfer to the boot. And you can just take that off and change your moisture barrier. And that way you don't have to bring a bunch of different socks or a bunch of different liners. Now this method isn't my favorite, but it definitely works really well. The downside is your foot's gonna be like a prune after sitting that water all day. It smells really bad. But if you're caught in a pinch and don't have those extra layers, then this kind of knowledge could save your feet. Now it's important to know that all of these these methods we just discussed can only be utilized if you're not making mistake number three, which is getting boots that are too tight. Now, winter boots should be at least one to two sizes bigger than your regular shoe size. And you especially want more room in the toe box section of your foot. And it should be able to accommodate two pairs of thick wool socks. And as a bonus, if it could accommodate a felt wool liner, that's extra insulation. But all these things and your feet should still wiggle inside. Now, if your feet are jammed up against the side of your boot, conduction is going to seep in and make your feet cold and blood flow constriction is just going to keep them that way. So remember, too loose is better than too snug. And the same goes for your wool socks. If your second layer of wool socks is so tight on your first layer that it's really condensing it down, it's going to be counterproductive. It's actually the loft and the void space that's giving you that insulation and warmth. And this is why the more raggedy and lofty the wool is, generally that equals to better insulation. Now I know a lot of people are sensitive to wool and that's why the inner layer, your wicking layer, can be a merino wool or a synthetic material instead. Now remember when hiking or doing whatever activity that you're doing, you could cinch up your boots tight to have a better fit. But when your activity is done or you're back around the camp, make sure you loosen these boots up to increase warmth at that point. So here's a small tip that only costs a couple bucks and you can make these yourself. These are reflective little insoles. You could go to the dollar store and get a reflective material. Just trace your soles and cut them out. And while something like wool adds insulation, you're going to combine that with a thermal reflective material to have some radiant heat come back at your foot. So I'll add a few extra degrees. Now, thank you again for making it this far in the video. I'm your friend DJ from The Bear Essentials, and I'm wishing you some great adventures and some amazing memories.